Hey, hey y'all, I'm here. I'm back with another video. So I am here to review P-Valley season one, episode one, the premiere. So I had already been very interested in this show due to the promotions that I seen. Um, I'm not a big fan of stars. I watched Power all the way up until like season three. So I was a little bit weary, but I liked the way the trailer was presented. And pretty much in a lot of things I had read up about it was saying pretty much that they were going to kind of like focus it was going to be about the strip club, but it wasn't just going to be about that. It was going to be more so a well-rounded story for all of the strippers and all of the girls that danced and stuff like that. So it it got me intimidated. And I would like to say about the show as a whole, I will keep watching. I will keep reviewing. It is a really good show already. I like the way they started. Everything was really, really good. I'm going to go through everything that I liked while I go through it. This was originally the idea and everything like that comes from, how do you say her name? K Katani. No, Katori Halley. Sorry, Katori Halley. So she's the one pretty much who came up with the whole idea of this. She is a playwright. I also heard that throughout, a lot, I think it's going to be eight episodes. Every episode, um, there is going to be a female director, which I think is very, very, very important. I could tell by the way that this was shot that it was shot by a female. Um, a lot of times you can tell if you pay attention enough. When something is shot through the gaze of a man versus through the gaze of a woman, for example, sorry, I'm going to get into the show, but for example, um, with the video twerk, so with the city girls, so Cardi and JT, and y'all know that whole video was just a whole bunch of ass shaking, that video was directed and filmed by a woman, and you could tell by the way that it was, it, the, by the way that it was shot, granted there was ass everywhere, but you could tell, I don't want to say it was, it was ass everywhere, but it was kind of tastefully in a way, whatever. Let's get to the story. So, I believe that this is located, I think it's located somewhere in Mississippi. I think, I think, I'm not too sure because I, I thought it was Texas, but I think it's Mississippi. Regardless, we start off with a very light skinned woman with a fro. Um, there is like a lot of different shots of like water and it being flooded. I don't know, that kind of gave me Hurricane Katrina vibes, but I don't know. But anyway, so. You see a case kind of rolls up on shore in the light skinned the girl with the curly hair. She opens it up and she sees ID. She sees some heels. She sees some, you know, nice shirt. She picks it up. Then you see her on the bus. Now, when you see her on the bus, I could see from there that, like, you could see, like, her lip was, like, a little bit messed up and her eyes and stuff like that. They pull over. You know how they be having a rest stop for the buses. Everybody take a rest stop. Then the um, bus driver's like, okay, come on, y'all, it's time to go. But you see little light skin, the girl, she's standing over there in the corner, and she just kind of looking off. And he's like, what's up, girl? We got to go. She takes her bag, and she just rolls on off, okay? So we get to the strip club. I, I'm going to assume everything's going to happen. Pretty much everything's going to take place. I believe it's called The Pink. And the funny thing about it is there was, I guess probably a whole lot of strip clubs called that because there was a strip club out here where I live called The Pink too. Um, yeah, so makes sense to me. So we get into the strip club. We kind of see like the vibe and everything. It looks like kind of like your typical, you know, mid-range strip club, not your bottom below. So it looks like it's not super high, like a super high-end strip club, but it looks like it's not in the bottom of the basement at the same time. Pause for the cause. I want to make this very clear. I love strippers. When 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 2 Chainz and Mickey said, yeah, I love them strippers, I felt that. They are like my favorite people in the world. They're like one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. They're so friendly. They're clean half the time. Um, they smell amazing. A lot of them do. Um, they're amazing. And I, the acrobatics that they do, I feel like they don't get enough, you know, they don't get enough um, respect for the acrobats that they do. These are pure athletes. If y'all seen on tonight's episode alone, the stuff that these girls be doing on the pole, like they're not playing no type of games. Like if you go to like, the like maybe the strip club I went to out here that's kind of like a low budget kind of strip club. It ain't it ain't enough room for do uh, for them to do all of that. But when you give these girls the room and space and opportunity, they gonna fuck a pole up. And it gives me very Cirque Hole. Okay, Cirque Hole. Okay, I'm not calling them hoes, but I'm just saying it gives me Cirque Sole vibes. Okay. But anyway, so we get into the strip club. Like I said, we see everything that's going on, kind of get a vibe of how everything's looking. We go into the back, and so we go into the back with all the girls. So this is kind of where everything starts. So we see a girl that comes um, back. She comes from off stage or whatever, bomb as fuck, bomb brown skin fucking girl. Um, and you know she was like somebody like 
do like a like the drink spilt on stage and she slipped and she fell and she busted her head open or whatever and so um she was asking could anybody go out there and go and finish it out for me so now you have very 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 thick very 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 thick ass brown skin very pretty ass woman who comes out she's like girl i ain't going outside there for you da -da -da -da. she's like come on girl just go out there and finish it for me so this woman's name who's talking the shit saying she ain't gonna go out her name is mercedes okay now mercedes is pretty much the head bitch she's the og she's the one who been here the longest she the one with the most tenor she the one who bring in everybody so mercedes is that bitch so mercedes is like all right fine girl so she goes out and she replaces the girl now the girl who came in her name is um mississippi we find that out later but i'm just telling you her name is mississippi so sorry about that so yeah so the girl mercedes she goes into the back um to where the girl mississippi was working or whatever and i think she was working in like a prep room so she goes back there starts dancing or whatever getting her money and one of the patrons, you know, he started touching her. She's like, ah, 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 keep your hands to yourself. He's all right, cool. She keeps twerking, doing whatever she's doing, get her money. And he touches her again. She's like, didn't I tell you? So she breaks a bottle and puts that thing to the nigga's necklace. Like, didn't I tell you? Don't touch me. So then we got, what is his dad going name? Hold on, because I have it written down here somewhere. I'm trying to think of what his name is. Then I can't think of what his name is right now, but the light-skinned guy, um, he comes or whatever, who's pretty much like the bouncer, he comes and he grabs the guy, throws him out of the club, which to me that was funny because in our reality, if you ever go to a strip club, you really are not supposed to touch unless you pay all of that extra money, but the people don't learn how to keep their hands to themselves. So you're here to look, not to touch unless you're going to pay extra, but anyway, so... When he throws him out the back or whatever, then you see uh, the manager or whatever, he comes out, you know, the back or whatever. And um, he's just pretty much, you know, talking shit like, man, this nigga needs to get the fuck up out of here. The police pull up or whatever, and they're like, y'all know y'all not supposed to be, hope y'all doing everything right in here. Y'all not supposed to be selling no alcohol. Y'all not supposed to be doing this and that and third. So the manager puts, you know, in a little to-go play. He's like, here, you know, here's some food. Take it home to your wife. I think he gave him, like, two stacks or whatever. And so the cop, he's like, oh, let me get home for this cold. I said, I know that's right. Took his little money, went about his day. Okay? So then we switch back to outside of the strip club and you see that there is a line or whatever outside because there is a $50 booty contest going on so exactly what it sounds like $50 to whoever's the best twerker whoever do the best so our girl uh the light-skinned girl her name well, sorry light-skinned girl she tried to get she get get into the line or whatever she's about to pay her buddy but I guess the guy was about to charge her more than he was the guy who came in previous to her or whatever. It's probably because she's a female. And a lot of times they do that at strip clubs. And strip clubs is one of the only places that as a female you will have to pay more to get into than a guy. Regular clubs, that almost that damn near never happens before a strip club. Normally, a female will have to pay more than a male to get in. A lot of times, that's how it be. But anyway, so then after that... So she see how she can't get in because she ain't got enough money. She pretty much goes and she goes and she looks over where the line for the girls who's standing for the booty contest. She goes and she stands over there with them. So then she goes into the strip club or whatever and all the girls are in the back and the manager's um, getting all the girls' names. He said, if you say your name is Alize, you might as well just leave right now. The girls said, up. Oh, let me think on the thing. Y'all gotta, like he said, some of these stripper names are very common. Alize, uh, Twinkie, um, Pebbles, like there are so many common stripper names. It's kind of, it's not even funny. So he moves on, gets this girl's name, the next next name, the next same girl. Then he gets a light skin girl. He's like, well, what's your name or whatever? Now, mind you, sis had a whole like nice blouse on, skirt, some some heels or whatever. Come to find out, it's Saint Laurent, or as she said, if it's Saint Laurent, calm down, girl, calm down. They're still in the back of the strip club. But anyway, so. You know, whatever she, so she, he says, "What's your name?" She says, "Autumn, Autumn Night." He goes, oh, "Okay, sound the old poetic and shit," which that's what everybody say every time they hear her name, which that's funny. So he's like, so then you know he tells them what the rules is, you know, booty contest, twerking contest, whoever you know, raining the most money, y'all get the cash prize at the end. 
So he looking at her, and he's like, girl, you you got something you can change into? Like, where's the ass? Where's the titties? Well, where's it at? And so she's like, oh, no, I don't have anything. So then he sends her to the back where this woman is selling, like, stripper clothes, pretty much. She's selling the leotard. She's selling the heels and stuff. Which, in our reality, I wonder if that's a real thing, because that actually makes a lot of sense. In actual clubs, you know, when you go into the bathroom, a lot of times they'll have, like, a woman in there selling stuff. But that makes a lot of sense to be having something back there for strippers, because they be forgetting stuff, too. So that's a good idea. So anyway, she, uh, I think it was, like, $20 for the leotard, but she gave it to her for 10 because she seemed like the girl was broke as hell. So then it's time for the, for the, uh, for the booty contest to start. And Autumn did that. Autumn, she came out, and she did that. Now, Autumn is not as like thick as the other girls like her titties ain't as big her ass ain't as big but they're they're both a decent size but she did that when she went out there like she killed it killed it killed it killed it killed it, killed it. and while she is dancing you can see her having flat it clearly it's flashbacks of what happened to her so apparently it seems like she got into some type of physical altercation with her boyfriend he pulled out a gun on her and she was end up she ended up being able to get the gun like and switch it on him and it looks like she shot him and she killed him. Now, don't know that to be true, but it definitely seems like she shot him and they, that he probably was dead and that's probably why she is where she is. So, um, after it's all over, whatever, they go into the back and you know, well, while she was dancing, you could see all the girls was mad. Like, all the girls who kind of already worked there, they was pissed, especially Mercedes, who's the head bitch. She was looking at her like, oh, okay, kind of giving you like, Autumn is kind of, Autumn is Diamond pretty much from Players Club. That's what she was giving me. She was giving me, um, you know, Diamond from Players Club. That kind of vibe. And so, our little girls was mad. So, they go into the back. Of course, she ended up winning the booty contest. So, she gets the money. Um, and, of course, our little girls was just looking at her like, all right, girl, whatever. So, then, you know, she pretty much asked, you know, what does she have to do to get a job? He's like, all right, little girl, you cute enough. You know, if you can get your titties done, get your titties done. But outside of that, you're cute, you little cute little. Cause mind you, Autumn is light skin. She's broke, which I love how they touched on like colorism throughout this. We're gonna get to that. Um. So yeah, he's like, you're cute enough. Fine, you can come tomorrow. <laughs> now, previous to this, to this little scene, Mercedes comes into the office and hands the manager a flyer, and the flyer says Mercedes last dance. Pretty much saying at the end of the month she's gonna do her last dance. She's pretty much done stripping. So he is very worried because he's like, you're pretty much, you bring in the main, like, you're the main one who brings in the money, whatever. So I'm going to have to figure out what it is I got to do. Switch back to the other scene. So when he says, all right, yeah, Autumn, you can work here. And Mercedes gets attitude. He said, girl, what you have an attitude for? Your last, your last time working here is going to be at the end of the month. So what you so mad for? <sighs> so you can tell that there's going to pretty much be like a, a, like a little rivalry, but maybe like mentorship kind of thing going on between them two because... She can kind of look at Autumn and probably tell she probably gonna be the next bitch up. It's probably just what bitch. She probably gonna be the next one up because she just looked like she got it. She looked like she got it. So, so then we move on, and you see her after she gets the money. She goes back to where it was that she was staying, which is just in like a room. She ain't got nothing but a mattress on the floor. Girl, been there, been there. I don't know why, but when I seen her next, and I was like girl i've been there before but um anyway she was drinking you could tell she's heavily drinking and she's looking at a picture i'm gonna assume this is her child because she was kept looking at the picture she kept touching it and her drunk ass spills alcohol on the phone so the phone is now no longer working so she had a little whole little heart attack about that okay then we switch over to the manager now i, I, I really wish i would have I, my, my notes erased itself after a point in time that's why i don't have it on here so i'm kind of pissed but anyway the manager goes and he's trying he goes to pay his rent he can't pay the rent that whole that 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 scene was funny um we switch over to mercedes and mercedes is um you can see her she's teaching some girls or whatever you know on a track you know dancing and stuff like that so pretty much it looks like mercedes is like a cheerleader or like a dance team like captain or whatever um which that kind of that that makes like the most sense she's a dancer so that makes sense why she would you know do that but then we have this interesting scene with her and clearly her mama right so well I, l l let me say previous to this scene you see mercedes she's at a church and um you know church is going fine so the collection plate come around and you know 
you see a guy see her i think she put like uh, maybe a hundred or something like that in the plate didn't really get the significance of that scene until this part so you see her and her mama they talking or whatever and you know she's like you know i can't believe you had these girls out here right now and all of this other stuff and pretty much the conversation is that the mama is you know disappointed or upset with the fact that her daughter is a dancer and is a stripper but what mercedes is saying is i mean you are only mad when it's convenient for you you're not mad when i'm putting money into the because i think she said something the mom said something about the church um the church's building fund or something like that oh i can't believe i took that money okay but you took it just like you took money for this just like you took money for that so you want to look down on me that bad but you're still taking the money so at the end of the day make it make sense okay so pretty much from what I'm getting from that conversation, she pretty much helps fund the church that her mama and stuff like that go to and probably the pastor of or whatever the case may be. She helps fund that church. Okay, so then um, we get to the club. Oh my gosh, I can't really believe my stuff disappeared like that. I am so mad right now, y'all. All my stuff disappeared. I am pissed. Oh my gosh. So I'm sorry. I'm going to have to try to go off my head because my notes really didn't save here. Okay. So we switch over to the club. Okay. And we see all of the girls there and stuff like that. The manager comes in and he pretty much make, tells them that there's going to be some changes and how he's going to need a little bit more money off top of this, a little bit money off top of that. Now the girls start bickering pretty much saying that the reason why that, that wouldn't be the case if Mercedes wasn't the one skipping out on tips at the end of the night. So I'm going to assume the way it works is probably similar to a restaurant. So like we all, you know, get tips or get whatever amount it is. And at the end of the night, we all put in and, you know, everybody gets something out of the pot. So Mercedes is like, well, you bitches don't do nothing. So you bitches don't do anything. I'm the one who brings in the money. So it is what it is, which to a degree, I kind of understand what she means, but it's not fair. If that's how it's been going. That's how it should be going. Everybody shouldn't. You shouldn't be the only person not putting it into the pot. Put it, Mercedes. Put it. So, in the middle of them talking, you see the girl Mississippi, like I said, the girl in the beginning who fell and busted her head. <coughs> she comes in and she's holding her baby. And they zoom in on her face. You can see her. She got like a real, real bad bruise right here underneath her eye. And her lip is cut and stuff like that. Somebody beat that man, beat her ass, okay? So, everybody just kind of like stop and he gives the manager comes over gives the baby to somebody he kind of sits her down and he's just like he the thing i love about this scene in particular between them two is there was no judgment at all there wasn't except towards the end but i got what he was saying there was there was no judgment there was no judgment at all you know he was just trying to make her feel better and was saying you know girl i got my ass beat too by this man like and you know she talked you know what a lot of people say when they be in like abusive relationships you know he says he loves me and they got two kids together and you know he said he gets it what he said is oh he said it's so true he said it's the type of love that like at least you feel something you know versus feeling nothing at all versus feeling numb you feel something and so he pretty much helps her gets her little gets her face together whatever you know and tells her at the end of the day he starts snapping on her because he's like you cannot if any reason this is what you do and by you letting this man mess up your face you're fucking up your money and at the end of the day that's what you got right now one thing you got that make it into is your money so some people would be like oh what was he yelling at her for but i understood the point that he was trying to make you have to be able to protect what it is that if this man walks out of your life that you're still going to be good and that is your face tell them you keep his hand to yourself and kill point blank period so he tells her you know go in the back and go get ready so then we continue and um you know so like i said all the girls getting dressed time to get ready for opening like he said and you could tell he was really like bothered and rattled up but when he was saying tapping the thing like okay it's the we're about to open up we're about to open up to me that was him like transitioning from trying to have like you know empathy and really being worried about this girl to you know what we got to try to make this money though at the same time so they open up and one thing i did write down that i love that they do they sell plates like they sell plates like with chicken and everybody now for the most part strip clubs a lot of times be having the best wings like their wings for some reason half the time are so fire it don't even make no sense so they just selling plates off of that he said i want to know where all of these hispanics is coming from dead okay so then we switch over 
and we see somebody her hummer pulling up or whatever and uh they get out all of these niggas get out and i mean niggas i mean nigga niggas they get out the car and they um you see a whole bunch of smoke coming out clearly they top box and shout out to them but anyway um Go in the back. One of the guys, he got like a bag or whatever. Take some water. Because I think there's like a brick in there. He pours like a little bit of water over it. Whatever. Then so, apparently this man thinks he's a top rapper. Which, the reason I love this so much is because I don't live in Atlanta. But I hear so many stories. of Specifically in Atlanta. Although this is not filmed there. But I hear a lot of this specifically in Atlanta. Of people really be per perpetrating. Uh, like they are somebody's famous rapper. Like they are somebody. Even though I know it's not just there. It happens everywhere. People really be thinking that because one or two people in your area know your song. That everybody now know your song. And now you can skip the line. Y'all remember you ever see that little TMZ thing of um... What's that girl's name? The girl, the little white girl who be on um ridiculousness or whatever her and she got mad because she couldn't get into a club and was cursing the bodyguard out that type of stuff. It's weird. So anyway, he thought he can get into the club, walk just straight in. He's like, nah, take your ass to the back. So they took their ass, what? To the back, okay? Take their ass to the back or whatever. And then, you know, we switch back over. We um and I think what time was it to go out? So you see the manager, he's walking around with the baby, which I thought was so cute. Uh, um, it's time for Mississippi to go out. So no, was it time for Mississippi to go out? I think it might. I think it might have been time for Mississippi to go out. I don't. But I, I I believe that's who went out the first time because he was holding the baby, and so he was telling her. Also, he was telling Mercedes like um. You need to take autumn with you, like doing your rounds and stuff like that. She was like, I'm not fucking babysitting no little girl. I mean, I'm not babysitting nobody. Like, I'm going to get my money. And he was like, well, do you want to watch the baby or do you want to watch her? Oh, okay. So her autumn goes out or whatever. Let me tell you something. Mercedes is bomb as she's bomb. She's built. She's pretty. So bomb. She's fire. She's fire. So come out or whatever and mercedes she got this like she has this it's like this fishnet see-through thing right so you can see everything oh no her nipples isn't even covered no so you can see everything and then autumn she has on like this cut off like white tank top or whatever and she got like these short shorts on or whatever they don't look bomb as hell so um come out or whatever and autumn i mean mercedes gonna be like bitch i need five five ten feet for this ass to be seen i said i know that's racist so She's pretty much just on huddle ropes. The first guy that she see, Autumn's about to, you know, he's like, oh, come here. And she was like, ah, 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 he didn't pop his tag. She was like, what do you mean? He didn't pop his tag. Look, and if you look underneath his um his shirt or whatever, you seen that there was a tag there, meaning he going to return shit, meaning he ain't got no money. Bye. So, you know, she keeps walking around and, you know, just kind of pointing people out. So Autumn goes to the bar and talking to one of the bartenders or whatever, which I hope we get to the bartenders right now now. Like, I'm saying right now, because y'all going on. But previous to this, the bartenders were starting to make that money even more than the girls on stage. Just saying. Shout out to Star Brim, okay? Um, but anyway, so, uh, the bartender is talking to Autumn, and she's like, you got pretty much explained to her, like, you got to know who it is to pick. You can't just be out here giving no lap dance to anybody, because these niggas for real, for real, you got to go to, to the people who got the money, pretty much. So she like telling her like you see that nigga over there like who over there in that cup would you would you talk to or whatever. She looking around she looked down on the dude's feet or whatever he got some Jordans on that they she's like she, I think she said they was eight fifty which he's out of his damn mind but he was like okay well how about him and she was like well if his shoes is eight fifty that means he spent all of that what bread actually do he have true then you switch over and you see an older gentleman he's kind of sitting in a cut with a cigar but I'm she was like and you see Mercedes kind of making her way over to him. And the bartender is like, see him. That's what you need to be dealing with. You see how he's holding himself? Look how he's holding that cigar. It's all about reading. You know, you just got to read the room, read the person, you know. It's pretty much, it's just an old time tale. Like, the niggas who show all the money, a lot of times they ain't got no money for real, for real. Like, have people with real money, they move in. They move in the silent. They don't hear nothing, okay? They don't be out here with all of this, this, that, and the third trust me it's very limited you would not know how much these motherfuckers make at all so <coughs> anyway
in the midst of that or whatever, you see the little murder guy and his crew come in. They come in or whatever. They end up getting something like a room in the back. <clears throat> I'm trying to think what happened in between there. Other than the fact before, yeah, because I'm, I'm going to go down that whole tangent about what happened. But before we get there, so you see Mississippi, she's in the back, whatever, and she's breastfeeding her baby. And then you see the bouncer, you know, security guy, he comes around to the back and, you know, he can see like the marks and stuff like that on her neck and stuff. And he was like, I can take care of that for you if, if you want. And she was like, you have more than enough bodies over there, okay, and don't know you're conscious. I don't think you need another one. Meaning that nigga puts in work terrified he's fine but i'm terrified i'm a little turned on slightly yeah anyway so um so yeah so she was like no i'm good or whatever da, da, da. so they're like all right mississippi it's your turn i don't think mississippi went the first time i can't think of who went out the first time but regardless hands the baby over because he was like don't worry i'll watch mississippi did that she killed i wonder i want to know can somebody tell me if she I'm gonna have to look up and see is she the one like are these women actually actually the ones doing the flips and trips and dips on the poles because if so she would have got all my ones i was sitting here like you have a cool off sis you deserved all the ones you deserved all the five the tens and the 20s she did that shit i said yes bitch that one little when that one little trick where she like she like like this is the pole and this is her legs and she was like this on it like that and she just spit her ass around yes let's go off so okay so yeah that was that part so let's switch back over to mercedes and autumn so mercedes and autumn they all individually doing their thing or whatever mercedes see that the people like the little murder whatever and his little people they got something going on and like vip so she goes over there or they got a section she goes over there whatever and you know she's looking like okay you're cute or whatever but i know you ain't got no real money he's like oh i got like five g's in here she's like no you probably got like three and maybe four or whatever so she was just calling him out on his shit she was like you know what bitches get out of here chop chop so all of the hoes that was in there left or whatever so you know she's just like you know i'm about to do what i gotta do to get this money from you and so you know but before she starts dancing he sees autumn in the background now, autumn's in the background twerking it twerking it twerking it twerking it twerking it he said she looked like beyonce's cousin no you want to know who autumn looks like to me she looks like drea like drea michelle that's who autumn looks like to me every time i look at her i'm like she looks just like drea just like drea but um drea from basketball lives um but yeah so they're like so like I said, this brings the whole colorism thing. And he's like, oh, like, no, nah, bump you. Like, I'm about to get hurt, whatever. So he's, she's like, no, 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 how about this? How about, because you could tell she was getting pissed. She was like, hold on, how about you can get both of us or whatever? Let me go and get her. He's like, okay, cool. Goes over to Autumn or whatever. And she's like, come on, we about to go do this little section or whatever with them. And Autumn's like, well, you know, no. Because technically, I guess, because Autumn is new, she's just supposed to just kind of be like walking around and doing small lap dances like that on the floor but not go back and be private but like she said he's like bitch you go get a stack and i'm gonna get a stack like come on like it's easy and you eventually you're gonna have to do this which that's true she's like so fuck these training women let's go so they'll go back into the room or whatever you know they start dancing or whatever getting money um you know, like i said um uh, mercedes had on this fishnet or whatever like i said and you can see like her bust or whatever straight through it but autumn had on like this top or whatever so when mercedes starts pulling down her top and they're dancing you know she starts to pull up autumn stop like, no, no 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 she's doing it like bitch come on now you know what this is stop playing these reindeer games so you know they start doing whatever and so one of the guys come in um it's like red bone hey red bone I, I hate when people say that i hate when niggas say that hey red bone and he's like i know you hear me talking to you and then it's like slaps on her ass and so the security about her outside who's on he's like didn't i say no touching unless you be in touch or unless she say it's okay it's brown people can't see self so they're like all right cool whatever so then eventually mercedes pretty much you know kind of convinces you know um little murder like let's go into the back whatever like because he said i'll give i got a little bit more and i can give you the rest of it if we go in the back she's like all right cool 
they go into the bathroom you can tell Arden's nervous as hell which she should have never left her because see this is what happened to diamond when diamond was left alone by herself upstairs no 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 not diamond when the other girl i can't think of her name the other girl was left upstairs during that bachelor's party okay what happened to her what happened to her mm -hmm. so anyway so she leaves autumn in there with the three other niggas she goes into the back yeah mercedes is a key she said she was had her head had some headphones in i guess it was hitting me she was like you're not banging me to this like have you lost your mind like this is trash the lyrics are trash and he was like oh so you won't get any money okay well i'd rather not get any money than you know not do my artistic duty i said yes she literally walked out i'm done now i like that part because a lot if i mean i don't think a lot of people maybe unless you like pay attention or whatever a lot of music get broke in strip clubs a lot of times that's how it is really big records they a lot of times they get tested out in the strip club first so honestly if i was a rapper i think that's smart as hell to go to a stripper for her to hear your stuff that makes all the sense in the world to me because she's gonna know she's gonna know what's gonna bump in this club she's gonna know what she can dance to what her people can dance to it makes all the sense in the world so i love that i love that they put that they sprinkled that element of it in because that's true so many records have been broken in strip clubs so she gets up she leaves out or whatever but in the middle of that the guy outside is being all rough with autumn being all extra stuff like that and grabbing on her and being like girl come on so eventually i think he like grabbed her like the wrong way so she needs that nigga in his balls and he fell and then um the security guy came in here he couldn't wait to beat somebody's ass he was so excited so he came in just started whooping ass or whatever autumn runs out the back or whatever now we keep seeing this guy with the camera okay he keeps taking pictures of shit so she comes outside he's taking some pictures of her but he's in her car but she peeps him he comes over you know she has a quick little conversation now he says he's there for real estate i'm pretty sure this man is a uh, like a detective or a cop or something like that and so you know they kind of flirt up with each other i think she said her name is her real name is halo or something like that she was trying to convince him to come in but he didn't want to we're gonna keep an eye on him Okay, because I know he got something to do with something. We're going to keep his eye on him and them two together. So, yeah, so she goes back into the club, whatever. Now, in the midst of this scene, you see um, the guy, Lil Murder, or whatever. He comes up to the manager or whatever. Now, mind you, the manager, um, I don't know how they identify, so I don't want to identify them wrong. But, you know, man, but got like you know like a long blonde weave makeup did outfit on you know but comes up to him and he's like hey you know i wanted to apologize you know to um to redbone because you know it wasn't supposed to go that far like i apologize <clears throat> so he couldn't hear him so he goes into this he brings him into this other room now this room was cute it was like clouds everywhere whatever it was all nice and shit so he was like no what was you trying to say to me he was like oh i just wanted to apologize to him you know i mean i wanted to apologize to her because it wasn't supposed to go that far so, you know, they start conversing. You know, I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. I don't know what just happened here. Ooh, he flirting, flirting. He flirting, flirting. So, <clears throat> the guy, pretty much what happened is that the manager ended up giving Lil Murder the neck, okay? So, after that, so, after that, <clears throat> I think we switch over pretty much to, um, mercedes let's because I, I gotta speed this up now i'm not i'm going way too long we switch over to mercedes mercedes it's like mercedes sunday or whatever and so it's her day to hit the pole or whatever you know this is the day that's for her so she comes out gives us a show shows us why it is that she makes the most money and i love the part where she goes to the top right and she literally is dancing on the ceiling but the thing is you don't hear the crowd you can just hear her like breathing and it's probably like I think that's that's probably how in her head it's probably how it sounds like let me just I don't even hear nobody I don't see nobody let me just get this money she hits comes all the way down into this crazy ass like split or whatever stop comes up in front of the stage grab this nigga head start doing like that sis look up why she see her mama I said ooh uncomfortable uncomfortable so she go outside and her mama making a whole big scene about how Oh my gosh, what did I do wrong? And all of this other stuff and the Holy Spirit and oh my gosh, and this and third and I should do better and da 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 da. When all of this say all of this and I find it 
Mercedes did say multiple times throughout the episode, like, you put me in a situation before, so now you're mad. But she was holding out. She just put, she, there was, like, the money in the bag, and she just handed it out to her. And when she handed it out to her, she just stopped crying. She took that money and she left. Trifling. Trifling. I'm going to need help. Help, okay? So then when we get um over to all of the girls getting tipped out or whatever, you know, and um, I think, I'm pretty sure the manager lied and gave what's her name gave mercedes back money or whatever because he felt bad because he know about what's going on with her mama and then you know we switch out back out and then we go outside and the girls is waiting to go home and again you see the detective taking pictures of autumn again i don't like it but i love the show though y'all tell me what y'all think i'm so sorry it was longer than y'all let's see what y'all think i'm out back <laughs>